Hey, it's Michelle, your CSC Biology tutor again. Welcome back to the Know the Differences series, Important Terms to Understand. And we, in this second video, we'll be looking at cell structure, focusing specifically on prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. What are their differences? All right, let's look at the prokaryotic cells to begin with. So prokaryotic cells, these are the cells that have no membrane-bound organelles. And when we're talking about organelles, we are specifically talking about those structures that are found within the cells that carry out particular functions. So prokaryotic cells, they don't have any of these, these organelles, these membrane bound organelles. And by that, I mean structures with a membrane surrounding it, structures that have a membrane enclosing the material. So key features to note about prokaryotic cells. They're usually very, very small, very small cells, simple in structure, and they make up unicellular organisms. So that one single cell, that is the whole organism. And another thing to note, so I just mentioned about the no membrane bound organelles in the prokaryotic cells. So that includes no nucleus, no mitochondria, no chloroplasts, vacuoles, endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, and it could go on and on. So all of these structures, all of these organelles which have membranes, they are not present in prokaryotic cells. So what happens to the genetic material? That's the first thing you may be wondering because you would know that the nucleus is the organelle that stores the genetic material. So normally in prokaryotic cells, the genetic material is freely distributed in the cytoplasm usually existing as circular DNA. So sometimes you call it the nucleoid, kind of like a makeshift nucleus, but there's no membrane surrounding that genetic material. So it exists freely in the cytoplasm. So let's look a little closely at the prokaryotic cells. So the common example with our bacteria. Bacteria, they have a cell wall, they have a cell membrane and they have a cytoplasm. And then you notice some additional features that the cell has as well. They often have flagella, which is useful for, which are useful for movement. So it's like the little tail that helps the bacteria to move through wherever it is going through, whether it's in our bodies, whether it's in the soil, the water. So that flagella helps with movement. So bacteria, they're good bacteria they're bad bacteria. So bad bacteria, they cause diseases such as gastroenteritis and the good bacteria, which are very useful in nature, those would be like the decomposers. Think of your nutrient cycles, carbon cycle, nitrogen cycle. So this is what a typical bacterial cell will look like. So there's no nucleus, no mitochondria, none of those membrane bone organelles. All right, let's move on to look at the eukaryotic cells. So what are eukaryotic cells? So these are quite the opposite to prokaryotic cells. These are the cells that have many membrane bound organelles. So all of their organelles will contain membranes surrounding the material. So key features to note about eukaryotic cells. They're usually larger and more complex cells as compared to the prokaryotic cells. And these cells will generally form multicellular organisms. So these are organisms made up of many, many cells. And because they have membrane bound organelles, you would find the regular organelles such as the nucleus, the mitochondria, chloroplasts, vacuoles, etc. So the genetic material is now going to be enclosed in a nucleus. So the chromosomes are enclosed in a nucleus, which is different to those, the chromosomes in the prokaryotic cells. So let's look at some eukaryotic cells. So these are the main eukaryotic cells here. Animal cells, so those would be the cells found in humans, dogs, horses, and every other animal on earth. We have plant cells, algae, grass, trees, fungal cells, that includes yeasts, mushrooms, and then the protozoan cells, also known as protists, those that include amoeba and plasmodium. Remember plasmodium is that that organism that causes malaria. So all four of these are examples of eukaryotic cells. So they all have the membrane bound organelles. Now the animal and the plant cells, 
they are the only two that form multicellular organisms only. Fungal cells, they can exist as both unicellular and multicellular organisms, while the protozoan cells actually are the only unicellular eukaryotic cells. So protozoan cells such as amoeba and plasmodium, they exist as single-celled organisms. All right, so let's look at animal cells versus plant cells. So you really need to know the differences between animal and plant cells. So you need to know the similarities and what they do not have in common. So similarities, so they both have a cell membrane, cytoplasm, nucleus, mitochondria, and ribosomes. Now when it comes down to the differences, these are the key points to remember. Plant cells only, they have a cell wall. You know the cell wall is there to give it structure, its shape, the chloroplasts for photosynthesis, and then the starch grains, which would be the food storage. Now in animal cells, they have glycogen granules for their food storage. So there's a difference there in the type of food storage. Now with plant cells, in terms of the vacuoles, plant cells have a large permanent vacuole. Animal cells now, their vacuoles are very small and temporary. And the reason for this is that plant cells, they need to store a lot of water. Vacuoles are like the main storage organelles for water, along with nutrients dissolving it. So plants need to be able to store up on water because they can't move around like animals to get water if they're running out. So that's why they have these large permanent vacuoles and these vacuoles also give the shape, help with the shape of the, the cell. So these are the main differences between the animal cells and the plant cells. So I hope you really understand now the differences between prokaryotic cells, which would be like the bacteria, and the eukaryotic cells, which include animals, plants, amoeba, and fungi. Thank you.